Abdallah is happy to see us in his classroom. It's a place of safety where he can finally learn and play with other children. It's a year since he lost his hand. He and his friends found a fridge which had a booby trap inside. We were playing with it and it exploded. Two children next to me died and an old man was badly hurt. I was too by a piece of shrapnel. Two of my friends died. Haifa Al Ali teaches the special class addressing the particular needs of disabled and traumatized children. She wasn't allowed to work at all when the IS were in charge. All she says about that time is that it was hard for everyone. We notice the children freeze up whenever they hear shots and explosions, which are still frequent here. They completely unsettle them. The United States funds the class. We are on a trip organized by the U.S. Army and State Department. They want to show us what has been achieved since the victory over IS in Raqqa. And they want to encourage more countries to fund the stabilization of the city. The security measures during our visit here in Raqqa are very, very tight. There have been several terror attacks over the past months and there are still IS sleeper cells operating in the city. The fight against the so-called Islamic State in Raqqa, which included U.S. airstrikes, destroyed more than 70 percent of the city. There's not much left, barely any hospitals, homes or anywhere to live, and no man's electricity. But people are slowly coming back. We really need work. If you don't have work, you can't eat or drink. Work is the most important thing. Luckily, some schools are opening again, and we registered our children. My daughter was not allowed to study under IS. Now she's in the first grade, even though she's older, but still, she's allowed to study. The U.S. has been giving what it calls stabilization aid to Raqqa. That means clearing mines and rubble, repairing buildings and supporting local people. But it doesn't mean large-scale reconstruction. Well, the United States has said that uh, in terms of rebuilding, that can't begin until we've got irreversible progress towards a political solution through the Geneva process. And so that's what we're looking towards. It's irreversible progress uh, on the political front. The future of Syria is being negotiated far away in Geneva, but the UN-sponsored talks there have stalled. And in Raqqa, the pressure is on. The longer reconstruction takes to begin, says co-chair of Raqqa Civil Council, Laila Mustafa, the greater the danger that IS might regain support among the people. The help offered so far is welcome, but it's not enough. Meeting with the U.S. representative, the council vent their frustration. They've heard that U.S. President Donald Trump cut about $200 million from Syria's stabilization aid. Those who destroyed the city should rebuild it. We expect the coalition and the United States to help us with this. They promised they would. For now, it's projects like this that the Civil Council is focusing on, repairing Raqqa's infamous stadium. The foreman, Emad, tells us Islamic State terrorists carried out mass executions here and that they tortured hundreds of civilians in these cellars. I hope that the stadium will be full again one day and the people will come and play sports here again, like they did before the IS took control. That's what we're hoping for. The first football games are due to take place here in a couple of weeks. They could offer a brief respite from everyday life in the ruins of Raqqa.